Okay, in our chapter we are looking at overhead rates and how to kind of budget and apply overhead. Uh, we're doing this in what we would call a normal costing environment. In earlier chapters we talked about an actual costing environment uh, where we didn't put anything to overhead, overhead until we actually had gotten a bill for it. So in this environment we're going to make a guess and try to guess what our overhead is going to be so we can apply it in real time instead of waiting for the bills to come in. So we're looking at predetermined overhead rates and we're looking at Omaha Mechanical and it gives us an overhead cost formula and it says our 2013 expected capacity is 78,000 direct labor hours. We would consider direct labor to be a cost driver in this problem uh, being that that is the thing that's going to make our cost go up every time we incur direct labor hours. So that's our driver. Making one unit of the product requires one and a half direct labor hours. So they want to know three different things. They want us to determine the total overhead to be applied. They want us to make some journal entries to apply the overhead and then also to record the actual overhead. And then they want to know how many units would be made in January with those uh, direct labor hours from B. So first thing we need to look at is the formula to determine predetermined overhead rates. And the book calls it predetermined overhead. I don't really like that terminology. I think a better term is budgeted because essentially what we're doing is we're budgeting our overhead for the year. So whereas the book says predetermined, I'm going to say budgeted. I think that's an easier word to wrap your brain around. So when we plug it into the formula the book gives us, we get the total budgeted overhead divided by the total budgeted amount of the cost driver. Now the top part of that fraction is going to be expressed in a dollar amount, your total overhead cost that you're budgeting for the year. The bottom part, the denominator, is going to be expressed in a number. So if we're talking about direct labor hours, maybe it's 70,000 direct labor hours. So the idea is we take our total budgeted overhead cost, divide them by the driver, and we get some kind of per unit amount. So here we go. On A it says determine the total overhead to be applied per unit of product in 2013. Here's all the information we're given in the problem. We're given a cost formula 42,900 plus six dollars per direct labor hour. Now keep in mind that is a monthly amount. We're given the annual capacity in direct labor and that's incurred evenly throughout the year and then we're given the direct labor to create one unit which is one and a half direct labor hours. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by calculating my total budgeted overhead. I'm going to calculate to get the first part of that formula, that little fraction we have there. So to do that I need the total amount for the entire year. So it tells me that 42,900 is a monthly amount so I need to take that and multiply it by 12. And then I also need to consider the second part of that. I'm adding $6 per direct labor hour. So I need to take that $6 and multiply it, and multiply it by the expected annual capacity of 78,000 hours. And then I would add those two items together. So we're going to do equal 42,900 times 12. And then we'll do equal 6 times 78,000. And then we're just going to add those two guys together to come up with a total overhead amount. Okay. 982,800. That is my total budgeted overhead. Again, overhead may end up being different than that. I'm just making a calculation here and guessing what I think overhead might be so I can apply it in real time. So that's my dollar amount of overhead right there. Now we're going to simply take that 982,800, the total budgeted overhead amount, and kind of plug it into our formula here, and then put the amount for the budgeted amount of cost driver underneath it. We're given that number. So we're just going to take 982,800 and divide it by 78,000 direct labor hours, and we get $12.60. And that number is a per direct labor hour. So that's the overhead that we're incurring per direct labor hour. On three, the actual answer they want us to plug in would be calculate the applied overhead per unit. So we'll just take our 1260. It takes us one and a half of those to get a product out the door. So I'm going to take 1260, multiply it by one and a half, and that should give us our answer for that one. $18.90 is what we're looking for. 
So that's the process in part A. In part B we need to make journal entries and there's actually two journal entries. We're doing a journal entry to apply our budgeted overhead and then we're going to do a journal entry to record what actually happened. And I put a T account over here to show you manufacturing overhead to kind of demonstrate what goes on on the debit side and the credit side of that account. So applying budgeted overhead, we calculated that per direct labor hour was $12.60. So that's the number I'm going to use. It says <clears throat> we had 6,390 direct labor hours that were worked. So I'm going to take that number 6,390 and multiply it by my hourly rate of 1260 and that gives me a number of 80,514. So I would debit work in process inventory 80,514 and credit manufacturing overhead 80,514. Now again that is an estimate. We're budgeting overhead. What really happens it says in the problem is that we had actual overhead of 128,550. So to record the actual overhead, we debit manufacturing overhead and we credit all the various accounts that might have made up that number, uh, whether it be wages, whether it be, uh, you know, parts, that kind of thing. So we plug that over here. And as you can see, we got two numbers in our manufacturing overhead T account what the deal is the debit side is for what actually happened okay so I'm gonna put this right here actual the credit side is for budgeted and what happens is we can either have under applied or over applied manufacturing overhead we budgeted or applied 80,514 in reality we had 128,000 plus in actual overhead so we under budgeted or under applied overhead and of course, if it was opposite, if we had more applied than actual, it would be over applied. Okay, so in this case, when our budgeted is less than what actually happened, we have under applied. Finally, on part C, we're given actual direct labor hours of 6,390 in the problem before. It wants to know how many products should have been made in January. Well, it takes one and a half direct labor hours to make a product. If we had 6,390 la uh, labor hours, we just divide those two numbers together. And that tells us we should have made 4,260 units. So again, the key to that problem is going to be your budgeted overhead rate formula. Being able to t take that total budgeted overhead expressed in a dollar amount and divide it by the budgeted amount of the cost driver to come up with a per unit amount. If you have any questions, let me know.